We are everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. If you are here listening to me, watching me talk, then you are that everyone, or you are we, okay? So there are spiritual beings all around the world, all around the earth, all around the globe. And uh, this is very needed because more and more spiritual beings are incarnating. Not everyone is a spiritual being, by the way. Some people are on a spiritual path, but some people really chose to come here to incarnate here with a special DNA, you know, from various other places in the galaxy and the universe to very establish a safe environment here for the planet Earth. So if you're, you're watching me, you're probably one of them. And um, yeah, we're uh, around the globe. So wherever you are, you're needed there. If you're in Germany, congratulations, good job. You need to stay there. Uh, or if you're in Switzerland or Mexico or China or, or India or Kwamato or wherever you are. Or in New Zealand, I'm in New Zealand. So take up charge of this um, action in your life and learn to consecrate things. Learn to shed, ch uh, channel your energy into stones and objects and energize them with your own frequency. That way you can leave a repository of energy around you even if you leave that place for 10 years approximately or more. If you, if you energize the right stone or the right object, it can stay alive and it'll benefit human beings for a long time to come. And also this is what needs to, needs to happen to the entire planet. The planet needs to become consecrated. It's, it's time to do that. Human beings need to live in consecrated spaces. And it's very, very important for us to, well, for us to learn the technologies of making this happen. And for, you know, to make this happen eventually and ultimately. So I made this title a long time ago. We are everywhere. I'm not sure uh, what this, what I meant by this, but it's an energetic title. So let's explore this. Mm, also, fundamentally, we are everywhere means, you know, you are as a human being. Your consciousness Your mind can be everywhere. It can be in everything and it is in everything because you don't have a separate mind per se or whatever, how, I don't know how this inner technology works uh, to the deepest level, these are just words. But whatever it is that's experiencing, it is also in the tree, it is also in this camera, it is also in this hat. So you can take a look at the, any part of the universe from any angle, from any kind of location. So in essence, you are everything, you are everyone. And this uh, goes, um, reminds me of Sadhguru's enlightenment experience. He said he came to this little uh, mountain or this little hill in his city, in um, well, wherever he's from, and Chamundi Hill. He sat down on this particular rock and he closed his eyes. He thought it was two minutes, but he woke up and it was four hours. And uh, when he woke up, he, he felt like everything was literally, everything was him or what it was him was spread all over the place. So it wasn't just him and this little physical casing, but him was the trees and the ro the rock and the tears and the sky and the sun and everything. So that's a physical reality that's actually what's happening here, yet you're kind of, uh, your senses are limited. So your senses have to be become expanded for you to be able to perceive this. And my senses are subtly expanding into this. I can see this like gently, I have a hint of this, like my consciousness or the consciousness or consciousness is inside of a tree, it's inside of a log, it's inside of a plant or grass or earth, it's everything. And everything is me. I have no right to, you know, take anything from, from them or to, to damage life in any way. And, you know, I'm just here participating in this life. I have a small part of this creation. I've uh, kind of absorbed a small little casing of consciousness and I'm able to experience my sensations in this physical body. But the sensations can be expanded outwards. I can expand my sensations to the grass over there. And if the grass were to get cut, I would feel it. Oh, it's not very pleasant or nice. So don't damage life, ladies and gentlemen. Don't damage life as best as you can. Uh, life doesn't need to be bad damaged, shouldn't to be damaged. It's very wrong and uh, false to damage life or to hurt life. Only when you know of, at a principle that what you're going to do is going to be uh, beneficial for all of life. The damage that you're going to cause now is going to be somehow better. Then, okay, good job. Like, for example, you can't say this for meat, by the way. Because you, it, it's maybe if you're starving, okay, that's something can say can be said about that. But still, I wouldn't do that. Uh, you can eat plants. You can eat plants, and uh, that's naturally what nature has designed human beings to eat. You shouldn't really eat animals. It's a little bit of uh, barbaric and not sane and unhealthy. So, looking at this physical place right now where I'm sitting in, I have a little mercury lingam uh, place in front of me. I'll show you. So that's 
I'm fairly certain it will be here pretty much for the rest of the time that I'm here. It's a nice energetic spot to place it in. And that's what I've done. And there's lots of grass here, so it's not really conducive for for um, for sitting and meditating. Also, there's cow poop, so <laughs> cows are grazing here. I'm glad that they were. I want to see some cows. I want to feed them some carrots. I want to pet them. I want to make videos with cows. Oh my god, it's gonna be it's gonna be such a rewarding experience in my life. I I really hope that that happens. So this grass needs to be cut, and I will cut this grass eventually, inevitably. And even though I'm going to destroy and damage life, the outcome, the consequences are going to be much more favorable for life in general, for human beings. So this grass is going to need to be sacrificed and then more life is going to come out of this place. So that's, uh, you know, a tantric principle. That if you're going to pluck a leaf, you better do something with that leaf that you, that leaf would naturally not be able to do in and of itself. So that's it, my friends, ladies and gentlemen. You need to talk to me. You need to reach out to me for a spiritual consultation. I will change your life. I'll read your chakras. I'll benefit your life in terms of removing the obstacles of your life. I will energize you and bless you. And I'll set you on the right course. All in exchange for donations. You don't have to donate, by the way. This is just a suggestion. If you don't have any money, that's too bad, unfortunate for you. Still, you should still talk to me. I still want to benefit your life. Why? For my own sake, for my own benefit. So I want to improve the conditions of my life or of life in general here on planet Earth because you're living in the same house as I'm living in and it's important for, for me to make sure that you're doing well so that I can also do well because if you're not doing well and you're hurting yourself and hurting others in this house, well then I'm obviously going to feel it. So this house needs to get better. You need to increase your level of consciousness so that also I can live well and peaceful and uh, in luxury and, and in ultimate bliss. Shambo.